And welcome back to another episode of Tristan's Reef. Today's episode is all about the live rock for my reef. But before we get into that, I want to give a big shout out to Rico, SC Reefer, and John Robertson for hanging out this weekend with our respective families. The trip to Mexico was great, and hashtag fairy farts is trending all over SC Reefer's channel. If you guys remember, head over there and make sure you tag his latest video with hashtag fairy fart. As reefers, we have been taught that porous rock, one pound per gallon, and as much as you can fit, were tried and true for starting a successful reef. Basically, if your live rock didn't smell like Free Willy just barfed it up from Tonga, then your live rock was not good enough. What's changed then? Well, as many of you know, there are now companies producing man-made live rock, mimicking live rock and what it's supposed to do, and these have become great alternatives. This still doesn't address the fact that this man-made rock is just an imitation and therefore only approaches the upper echelon of what we have traditionally been taught about what it takes to have a successful reef. But live rock, for all its benefits, also brings with it some challenges. Those pores get clogged over time and require you to occasionally blow out the fish fruit that accumulate there. Too much live rock means less swimming space for fish, more challenging aquascapes to light, and it also means more powerheads to bring flow to those areas. I challenge you to think outside of the box like I have decided to do with this particular build. I have decided to drastically use less rock than I usually do and get more creative with my aquascape. I'm planning to use live rock and the surface area it provides to grow beneficial nitrifying bacteria that rely on the thousands of innovations that have come since then to filter my new system. Highly efficient skimmers, reactors, robust refugiums, and yes, even some of those man-made alternatives, all of these are things that have come through numerous numbers of innovation and have become so efficient right now that we just don't need as much live rock as many of you really think. Now, this doesn't mean that you can go out and pick up some cinder blocks and throw them in your reef. You still need to use surfaces appropriate for your bacteria to grow on, but you just don't need as much of it as you would think. This system will hopefully address all of the negatives of the old reefer way of thinking. And as a result, it will result in a system devoid of the negatives of using too much live rock. So for this build, I decided to continue using the real reef artificial live rock that I picked up at Nemo's Reef. To begin with, I decided to place this rock into my existing sump and active reef so that it can actually start the process of becoming populated with the prerequisite bacteria. In a few weeks when the aquascaping begins, you guys will start to see how the rock has changed from what it is now to something that looks very familiar to what you would find in a reef that was years and years old. So with that said, I'm gonna wrap things up here. Guys, I'm going to be heading up to New Jersey this weekend and hopefully have an opportunity to meet up with Dave and the rest of the crew up there. Um, heading up there for a fishing trip, so I hope to pick up some really great footage of, uh, of the trip and what happens. So, as always, please like and subscribe if you like my content, and I'll catch you guys on the flip side.